your uh, revenues dropped 19% in the second quarter, which was actually worse than analysts had anticipated. Are you concerned about a second wave that could also impact the second half? Uh, first, you know, the, the, the sales, I think, uh, on, the, on the first half total were, were pretty uh, solid with a minus uh, 11%, which considering the fact that uh, for several weeks or months, all hair salons, perfumeries, department stores, uh, airport stores were closed uh, is, uh, is in fact pretty good uh, and shows a, a good uh, resiliency. And, uh, and so uh, we, will, uh, we will see what happened for the second half. Personally, uh, I'm pretty confident for the second half. First, because I think that the, the appetite for beauty uh, is strong. Uh, it's always strong. Uh, number two, I think that the, we, we will not see the same type of lockdowns, confinement uh, that we experienced in this first half. Because it has been proven that it's very uh, devastating for the economy. So I don't think that we will see it again. And third reason, very important, is that uh, e-commerce uh, has really grown tremendously uh, uh, along this crisis. Uh, now it's, uh, it, you know, it grew 65% uh, on the first half, but uh, in, for example, in June, it was growing 80%. So e-commerce is more and more a, a very good alternative for, uh, for consumption. China was also uh, boosting revenues up 30% in the second quarter. Uh, what kind of growth, though, are you anticipating in the US and Europe? And do you think China will be enough to compensate? Well, you know, I think that, that uh, little by little and month after month, uh, we are going also to get back to uh, positive territories uh, in, uh, in the other part of the world, in, uh, in uh, Western Europe and, uh, and the US. I can't say exactly when, but we see that there is a, a steady improvement uh, globally. Globally speaking, you know, the, the, the difficult month for us was April, when, when all the stores in the world, uh, well, most of the stores were closed. Uh, and then uh, it, uh, it rebounded month after month. And, uh, and as I said, July, uh, this, uh, this month that we are closing today will be the first positive month again uh, since January. So it's uh, globally very positive. So China is part of that, but, uh, uh, but I'm pretty confident that in some uh, other parts of the world, like Western Europe or America, we are getting uh, slowly back to a, a positive situation. I'm walking from home and as you may or may not see, I put a little bit of makeup today, but that's become the exception rather than the rule. Do you actually believe it's the end of an era and there is going to be a deep lasting downturn in makeup and cosmetics? No, I don't think so at all. Uh, first, I'm very happy to see that you are wearing some makeup and uh, I'm pretty sure that by the way, people are more and more, even when they stay home or, or uh, more and more wearing makeup again, maybe not, of course, as much as they used to before, uh, but uh, consumption, and we see it, by the way, consumption is rising again uh, for makeup. And, and secondly, uh, Caroline, uh, we all hope that uh, you will not be obliged to uh, work from home for the rest of your, of your life. So uh, there will be a day where you will, uh, with a vaccine or a treatment or uh, or something where you will be uh, able to go out. And I, I'm betting that this day uh, you will wear a lot of makeup because you will want to celebrate the return to, uh, to the real life. Are you facing some kind of resistance from some employees, especially in the United States, to actually return to the office? You know, what we are doing is that we are doing a very progressive uh, return to, to, to the office, uh, very safe. Uh, and, and in fact, you know, we, we learn uh, in the different parts of the world where we experienced it. That's the, the good thing when you're an international company is that we, we experience first in China, then we, we are able to experience it in uh, Western Europe, in France, for example, where I am right now. And so what we are doing is a very, very progressive uh, return to, to work. First, of course, uh, every employee who is uh, fragile in terms of health stays home. That's very clear. And even for the others, 
you know, it's very progressive. For example, in France, we started with uh, something like 20% of the people, then uh, 40%, and alternative, alternatively between uh, teams A and B. So it's, it's a very progressive, and of course, all, we are always following uh, the uh, indication given by the local authorities. So uh, it's very progressive, and I think it, uh, it would be uh, very smooth. There have been some uh, privacy concerns about the app TikTok uh, because of its uh, relationship to uh, China. Um, are you rethinking perhaps your uh, ad spending on TikTok? We are monitoring the situation. <laughs> I would say that, you know, on, uh, like on, uh, on many other uh, applications or in our relations with, uh, with Facebook and, uh, and others, uh, the the situations are very volatile uh, every every day, even, and so uh, we are monitoring the, the situation very closely, and uh, we will uh, we will adjust uh, uh, our policy uh, depending on uh, on the, the evolution of the situation. So you could possibly reduce ad spending if there are some concerns over privacy, correct? But, you know, we we don't want, uh, of course, to partner with. Uh, with uh, apps that have a problem with privacy, of course. So, uh, so we will do what, uh, what we have to do, following our code of ethics. You um, are going to uh, retire by next year. You're searching for an internal candidate to succeed you as a CEO. Is there any strong female internal candidate? Of course, of course. You know, we have many, many very strong uh, females uh, uh, general managers, a member of the executive committee, brand president, country uh, general manager. So, so uh, as I have said already in the press, uh, in interviews, uh, the, the, the nomination committee uh, uh, has been, uh, uh, you know, undergoing a, a process uh, to uh, evaluate candidates. And, uh, and obviously, among these candidates, uh, there are, uh, there are uh, men and women. Obviously. M more generally, what have you learned about diversity over the last six months, uh, let's say, and what do you think you would tell us in six months from now? Uh, you know, I, I learned about diversity uh, more than six months ago. Uh, I remember when I was uh, appointed uh, uh, chairman and CEO of Loyal USA in 2001, uh, that uh, it was a very important subject already at that time. I think that uh, I was and Loyal was at that time the first company to appoint a, a chief diversity officer in Loyal USA. Uh, and after that, I think that we were the first company also, the first global company to, uh, to create a mandatory uh, diversity uh, training program. And uh, if I remember well, more than 30,000 uh, employees of Loyal, uh, it was a mandatory uh, training. And but more recently... But, you know, more recently, what I have seen is that just this problem uh, is still a, a, a very, uh, a very important one, and uh, and it it uh, it's uh, it's important to uh, to keep progressing on it. So that's why, by the way, we have decided to create this uh, diversity and inclusion board uh, in the USA, uh, in uh, in UK, uh, in uh, and now at the at the head of the group. Uh, so we are uh, we are permanently uh, improving. I think it's a it's a never-ending uh, cause. So we have to keep improving all the time. 